This John Lothian News video is sponsored by What are the main regulatory issues still facing the derivatives world? And what are the next steps in the process? As clearing relates to other aspects of the structure, particularly the SEF execution, to some extent the reporting, you know, there's still questions about how that's going to happen, what the connectivity is going to be, uh, what happens if a trade is done and it's not accepted for clearing. So those are going to be the issues, is how does clearing connect with other parts of the, of the new structure. Europe is currently in the middle of soliciting views on the clearing mandate. Uh, they had a paper out over the summer. Uh, we're in the process of preparing some comments on that. We expect them to take that and then come out with a more formal consultation paper uh, in anticipation, we think, of being up and ready for the mandate sometime, certainly in 2014, probably roughly the summer of 2014. This is conduct rules here in the U.S., uh, portfolio reconciliation, dispute resolution, uh, compression. Uh, those are all good things to do. They're all widely used in the marketplace in many cases through efforts that we've led over the years uh, to encourage those issues and encourage the establishment of dispute resolution and compression. But in terms of a regulatory requirement, many, many countries in their rules don't have re regulatory requirements and therefore there are going to be those issues as to comparability uh, when you look at you know, the U.S. that has these business conduct rules and other jurisdictions that don't have anything comparable. What is the status of the standard initial margin model currently under development at ISDA? The goal of the SIM is to provide something standard that can be used across the industry to calculate the initial margin. It also helps operationally just to make things more efficient as opposed to everybody, everybody having their own model, having their own systems. They can rely on a standard model across the industry. And we're, and we're looking to, you know, we're, we'll work very closely with the regulators for that. Uh, and the regulators are supportive of establishing that. They understand the, the benefits of it. Uh, so we'll work with them to make sure that they're comfortable with what comes out of that process. Anytime there's uh, market volatility uh, and people are concerned about holding on to their assets, uh, you can see an increase in disputes, uh, whether it's on, frankly, on variation margin or on initial margin. And so to the extent you can, you know, put in place structures that help avoid some of those disputes, uh, we think that's a good thing. We think the regulators do as well. Trade repositories seem to be an area where global bodies are not cooperating as well as hoped. What is going on? We uh, have been involved in working with the industry and ultimately with DTCC initially and in trying to establish these repositories. Uh, the the you know, CDS repository is what people point to as a good example of what can be done when you get a lot of transactions in one place where regulators can see risk building up in the system. Uh, and the fact is that we've got um, a proliferation across different product sets, which was kind of known would be the case, but also even within product sets, multiple repositories in some cases, sharing information in some cases not, and then a lot of different jurisdictions establishing their own repositories. So we have you know, a lot of different flows of information to different parts of the world. So the goal of providing you know, a window on risk uh, has been undermined by that proliferation. So now regulators globally, if they really want to see where risk is building up in the system, they may need to look at 5, 10, 15 different repositories to see that, and that's going to be inefficient and inevitably something might be missed. 